All right, a very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first things first, apologies for my accent. I will do my best to be understood. Uh, so this is indeed a, a mixture of Portuguese and Italian, so uh, a sincere apologies. Uh, first, uh, I would like to also thank you, Paris, for the, the opportunity. Uh, for Fonterra here to be here today and, 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 and to present a little bit the thinking how we treat our Australian milk pool and how we go after this incredibly exciting but challenging uh, dairy markets. Right, it's impossible, absolutely impossible, to talk about dairy markets in Australia without starting by acknowledging that uh, we are just off from probably the toughest, toughest season uh, that our farmers in Australia had to experience for a very long time. So Peter, I think we absolutely align with that, that uh, uh, the pain that uh, farmers have felt here uh, are fairly unprecedented uh, on the back of uh, what I call personally a uh, perfect storm. We saw a combination of import bans, the second largest importing dairy market in the world, if you take like Russia, being banned uh, to, to import products, or, or the Western world, as called that way, uh, banning from its exports. We had a situation where uh, they spring in, in, in multiple parts of the world, that includes New Zealand and Australia, uh, was incredibly wet, so uh, production uh, shortfalls were there. So indeed, very, very tough times. <coughs> However, uh, this is also an exciting, exciting part of, of the business to be involved with. I personally feel very lucky that I think we are working the dairy business because when you look into the very fundamentals of dairy, you know, is the world consuming more dairy? And that's the, 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 biggest, the biggest question that we have as Fonterra. You know, are, are consumers in emerging markets like China, in Southeast Asia, consuming more dairy? And the answer is yes. Uh, for example, in China, what we are witnessing is a relaxation of the one-child policy. You know, uh, a lifestyle of a typical Chinese mother that unfortunately can't breastfeed, uh, which makes um, you know infant formula or nutritional milk powders uh, a very uh, exciting part of the business to be involved with. Now, when you look, for example, into the opportunity. Right? When you look into this total dairy demand in the world, uh, on the back of that per capita consumption growth that I was referring to, uh, this is a world that will be consuming approximately 900 billion liters of milk by 2023. And if you analyze the statistics where you know, per capita consumption has been going and where you know, production of milk has been following, you know, that is very true. You know, this has been the case over at least the past 10 years the capital consumption is increasing. This is good news. This is um, good prospects for the dairy industry. Now, is accessing this demand easy? To win in this market, is this easy? Uh, without innovating, without actually changing the thinking that we, we, you know, how we go for those markets, how we can ac get access to these markets, and how can we all profit from this big opportunity. So I wanted to show a little bit of how Fonterra is treating those, this, this big opportunity in a, in a global scale. First, we talk about having what we call efficient and state-of-the-art manufacturing. So to stay relevant in these dairy uh, global markets, we uh, absolutely recognize that the small island of, or the two islands of New Zealand cannot supply the whole world. We are compelled to develop milk pools outside New Zealand, and that's why I keep saying to everyone that I meet in Australia in my first year in the market here, that we are in Australia to stay. Fonterra is not going anywhere. You know, there's a lot of talks about in terms of is Fonterra here to really, you know, to profit from the Australian farmers? Absolutely not. We are here to generate a sustainable business, pay a competitive milk price to our farmers, and prosper from this big opportunity that we, 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 we have ahead of us. Now, we have developed in Fonterra what we call the multi-hub strategy. 
So in essence, we have developed multi-hubs around the world to access markets where there is a clear deficit of, of milk production. I'll give you an example where in Australia, we are growing our milk pool. We are now at 1.7 billion liters, approximately. We have an intention to continue to grow and co to continue to, to invest in the Australian market uh, in terms of manufacturing capabilities. Um, for those who are closer to, to the dairy industry, we have announced 120 or $130 million of investment into the northern, state, northern part of the state of Victoria, uh, where we are building a, a significant, uh, a modern state-of-the-art facility uh, for cheese production in Stanhope. Uh, we continue to invest in our cheese manufacturing capabilities in Tasmania as well, in, in, in Winwood, uh, which is all to make sure that we create a manufacturing footprint in, in Australia that is truly what we call complementary for New Zealand. Now, for you to be with me and for you to, to be connect with our strategy, in New Zealand, you are probably familiar with the she scale of business that we have to manage every year. So it's a 25 billion liter milk pool. Uh, we have a very, very steep seasonality of that milk. Um, we have a significant, what we call peak milk. What it means is that our, our factories, our processing scale is significantly different versus Australia. So we have dryers in New Zealand, to give you an idea, they're processing about 30 to 35 tons of whole milk powder per hour uh, during the peak months of, of, of the year. So that is uh, an incredible scale of, of operation. However, in Australia, because of the peak to trough sort of a ratio being much smaller than New Zealand, we are in a position to have uh, almost an all year long sort of production strategy which meets really, really well with uh, products like infant formula, where consumers buy every day, and especially Chinese consumers that are paying very, very close attention to freshness uh, of that product. So that, that is one particular product that will continue to invest, will continue to grow uh, directly with customer relationships. Cheese as well, of course, cheese uh, being with a chilled supply chain, with a, a frozen supply chain, uh, the cost of warehouse, if you have a, a very seasonal production, is totally different from a more stable production as we manage in, in Australia. So uh, we take a complementary approach. We continue to invest on, on manufacturing capabilities, on technology, to make sure that uh, those milk pools complement each other in the best way. Now, Australia is not only about uh, whey, infant formula, and cheese, but we also continue to look very closely into adding value to the skin milk powder, Peter, that you mentioned, uh, portfolio, which is also very important uh, for Australia uh, as a product that we, we pose into international markets. Other key points uh, for uh, the sustainability of our results in, throughout the company we talk, about, about, talk a lot about dairy science and innovation. Uh, we are very proud to say that uh, we have uh, an enormous capability of uh, research and development uh, located in Palmerston North uh, in New Zealand. Uh, it is one of the world's uh, best in class research and development centers for dairy. Uh, we are bringing that research and development capabilities closer and closer to our customers. Uh, and the value is being generated. So I'll give you, give you some examples of that. We, uh, we have, in just a, a very recent one, we are currently studying the effects of lactoferrin, which is an incredibly valuable part of our dairy ingredient portfolio into research around things like Im immunity. Uh, even HIV-related studies together with uh, the Sydney University here. So it's something really exciting that we can actually create those kinds of conversations and those kinds of collaborations to actually uh, fight something that is very uh, close to our hearts in terms of you know, all the HIV situation. Um, we also invest a lot in terms of uh, creating what we call an end-to-end -end supply chain that uh, remains uh, very efficient uh, to support that manufacturer efficiency that, we, that, is, that I talked about. 
What it means is uh, we uh, invest on traceability. Uh, to give you an idea what it means, Fonterra aspires to be able to connect the pharma silo, the pharma milk tanker, to a quality incident in a matter of minutes. So we want to be able to know where that milk came from in just a matter of minutes because of the traceability component that we're going to have in our supply chain. So, uh, so innovating this, why is important? Because customers are expecting that. Especially when you talk about a sensitive category like infant formula, infant nutritional. If a mother buys a product that has an issue, it's a crisis in a matter of minutes, hours. So uh, we want to be able to respond very effectively against that. Uh, we talk about consolidation distribution network and uh, QR coded product authentication. The QR coded product authentication is very important against our fight against um, uh, counterfeit products, especially important in, in the Chinese scenario. And consolidation distribution, we, are, we have announced uh, a very significant warehousing operation in Melbourne, uh, which is a 12 stories high operation where we're going to consolidate all of our supply chain distribution in that warehouse that is going to have a much closer uh, uh, operation to the ports, export ports, and a much quicker reaction against customer demand. So um, this is very exciting for us. Other area that we are very proud of uh, and we continue to invest on our innovation is around our global reach and uh, the relationship we have with global customers. Uh, we live and breathe our customers. Uh, we are constantly speaking on their behalf. I'll give you an example, uh, one that I, I'm personally close and I think uh, when I look to the audience, Peter, you one that you'll be very close as well. The fact that the, the Australian Dairy Federation has been fighting against the, the hormones uh, inclusion into our supply chain in Australia. This is particularly important for us because the, the implementation of that hormone in our supply chain will play a role significantly on our ability to access markets and our ability to access customers. Global customers specifically, they will not think twice to change the source from Australia to go to other countries that have banned this, this material. So uh, a very significant commercial implication uh, for us. So we are uh, uh, essentially working with those customers to bring innovation and to bring uh, policies to the milk pools where we, we are working for. Uh, we have also, to give you an idea what we've done in terms of global market, we, we are accessing today over 100 countries. Uh, we have invested a lot in terms of gathering market access uh, know-how. Uh, this is especially important in some categories, such as the nutritional milk powder category in China, which is in an ever-changing regulatory framework at the moment. Uh, we are working very close also with the New Zealand authorities, making sure that uh, we benchmark and uh, we, we have one Fonterra approach to the registration uh, that will be required. Consumer insights, uh, again, innovation is not about reinventing the wheel, but again, capturing those insights and transforming into new products. Uh, this is a picture of um, our chief operating officer of ingredients, uh, Kelvin Wickham. Uh, and we're very proud. We're very proud to say that if you look, for example, the China cheese market, to give you some stats, what, a, what the China cheese market represents today, uh, this is a market growing over 20% year on year, uh, where today Fonterra has about 50% market share. So 50% of all pizzas consumed in China today has a Fonterra cheese on it. Uh, and why it represents an opportunity in Australia? Simply because we are going to have close of 100,000 tons capacity, installed processing capacity, in between Winwood and Stanhope uh, to access this growing market. So throughout many years, throughout the result of consumer insights and customer collaboration, we have understood what the Chinese people actually values when eating a pizza. You know, different from my own background in Italy or Brazil, where we eat pizza with sometimes with fork and knife. The Chinese eat with the hands, and they love the stretch. 
of the cheese. So these are the kind of insights that you actually capture whenever developing a product that it can be a winner in the market, that can, be, uh, 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 so can generate sustainable returns back to our business. What the future looks like? First things first, as I said in the beginning, volatility is here to stay. I personally don't see volatility going anywhere. To give you an example of what I'm telling you, I think we all uh, saw recently the election of Mr. Donald Trump and all the immigration debate that this is generating in, in the US. For the first time in about probably 10 years, or at least I'm involved in Latin American business, one of the largest uh, tenders of skin milk powder in Mexico was not awarded to an American company. So that was awarded to an European company. So again, what it means for Australia is that the Americans will be looking to other markets to sell that skin milk powder portfolio, and that will be certainly Southeast Asia or China. That will compete directly with our products here. So we think about innovating, we think about, okay, how we can continue to have those customers' relationships that I was referring to, and those consumer insights to actually make sure that we have a sustainable portfolio of products that will generate the right return for, for our business here. So the future looks for me, at least for Fonterra, a very volatile future. And innovation will be absolutely critical for us to hedge this, you know, our business against that. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's not about we creating absolutely new products or reinventing. Or, this is about, we talk a lot about disruption these days. Uh, how, for example, Uber has disrupted the, you know, the taxi industry, et cetera. We are constantly looking to disrupt the dairy market. Uh, we are thinking, for example, how consumers in China can actually connect to farmers, how consumers in China can actually buy a product, scan, or go to the website and understand, well, my milk is coming from that farm. You know? It's about selling that value proposition or that dream or trying to disrupt the market. That's the efforts of, of Fonterra at the moment. Um, and it's really about that connection. Create that emotional connection with customers and consumers. Uh, I think we live in a world of emails today, but at least from the way we try to do business, we still believe on, the, on that famous handshake. So uh, I think that's how we, we try to, to conduct business. So I hope it was insightful. More than happy to, to take questions later on. But uh, thank you again for your attention.